Well, Singapore is also taking further steps to make its city more livable and sustainable as part of its long-term urban planning. The National Development Minister has shared plans to expand district cooling systems to more places in a bid to cut the country's overall carbon footprint. A public feedback is also being sought on plans to expand a programme that encourages greenery in urban areas and buildings. We must be unafraid to take bold steps to safeguard the best future for generations to come. This means thinking about not just our needs, this means not just consuming resources for our current generation, but thinking about the future generation, planning for them, keeping resources and stewarding resources so that we hand to them a better and more robust Singapore than the one that we inherited. Singapore's building owners are being incentivized to use, utilize district cooling systems in a bid to improve energy efficiency and reduce carbon footprint. Analysts whom CNA spoke with say that besides freeing up valuable commercial space, these systems can also save around 30% of energy consumption. Carbon emissions could also go down by around 50%. The system works by using a centralized chiller plant. It will pipe cool water to surrounding buildings and deliver warmed water back to be re-chilled. Such systems are used in several buildings at Marina Bay, Pongol Digital District at Tenga. The improvement in district cooling energy efficiency can lead to significant savings in carbon emission. In this case, again, it's about in the range of about 20 to 50 percent. But again, it depends on the scale of the district, uh, district cooling system as well as, as how many buildings are involved in utilizing that cooling system. When spaces are needed to support centralized cooling infrastructure, it will be considered bonus gross floor area. It will not count towards what was uh, allocated for the site by the Urban Redevelopment Authority. The bonus space is capped at 10% beyond URA's approved plans. Developers will also be able to repurpose any space previously used for chiller plants. You can free out a lot of this space which is currently used as a chiller plant and, machine, and, and some of the machinery like cooling tower and so on. All this space then can be free out uh, for commercial use and other usable, usable kind of space. Also in the pipeline are plans to improve high-rise buildings to better connect the urban landscape with the environment. The URA is seeking feedback from industry professionals, academics and nature groups to help achieve this goal. The new plan expands on the current Landscaping for Urban Spaces and High Rises program. Nashra Rohim with more. These sky-high gardens are one way developers incorporate greenery into buildings. That's under the Landscaping for Urban Spaces and High Rises, or LUSH, program. It's a scheme that spells out requirements and incentives for greenery and communal spaces to be included in buildings. Architect Chan Su Kian worked on a Queenstown public housing block. He explored different ways to add more green features and suggested giving more space for different types of plants. One possible way to encourage more biodiversity would be to mandate larger sky planters. So instead of just doing vertical greens which need more maintenance, if, if uh, certain larger planters are not counted as floor area, we could encourage planting of certain species of trees on the facade beyond just planter boxes in the balcony. Authorities are planning to update the LUSH program. This may include guidelines that will suggest ways to improve the variety of plants in high-rise buildings. These seek to enhance biodiversity in homes and offices. The Nature Society says there's a limit to the types of trees that can grow on rooftops as it can only hold a certain amount of soil and the trees can't grow too tall. Most of our species, especially the rare ones, they do require forests like real forest habitats, uh, which is very hard to create on urban structures. Um, you know, there is a reason why most of our, bio our biodiversity in Singapore is found in Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. 
One possibility under the new guideline is to introduce native plants that will encourage the movement of wildlife across the city. One industry player says the new program may encourage more thoughtful planting to take root. Oh, I think they're expanding to giving extra incentive to, to encourage owner to be more creative in terms of adding diversity to the, the, the town greenery, biofauna or, or plants or whatever, uh, adding to the, the greenery so that she can uh, make the space more uh, kind of, uh, close to the environment rather than just putting green wall. Such efforts, if done well, could truly make Singapore a garden city.